Under the Bush White House, it has become corrupt in a way not seen since the Attorney General brainstormed with Richard Nixon on how not to prosecute Watergate. With dozens of conservative ideologues placed in career positions, jobs that will outlive the current administration, the sender of a racist email will learn to, we learned tonight not only still in the employ of the department, but now assigned to another racially sensitive post. Our third story in the countdown, what does President-elect Obama do about the Department of Justice? His pick for Attorney General Eric Holder goes to the Hill tomorrow for his confirmation hearing, where he's expected to be grilled by the ranking Republican Arlen Specter about his record under the Clinton White House before anybody moves on to the real challenges ahead at justice. Part of the legacy he confronts comes courtesy of former DOJ appointee Bradley Schwazman, who managed to influence hiring in the Civil Rights Division to such an extent that out of 65 new hires for supposedly non-political posts, 63 of them had Republican or conservative ideological leanings, and those employees get to keep their jobs long after Bush loses his. And despite the fact that the Justice Department's own internal investigation found Schlossman lied to Congress about his hiring practices, the office of the D.C. U.S. Attorney has declined to prosecute him. Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer today calling that decision, quote, confounding. He is now asking the DOJ to appoint a new prosecutor, preferably Nora Dennehy, who led the investigation into the political firings of those nine U.S. attorneys, to now investigate charges against Schlossman. We're joined now by Jonathan Turley, constitutional law professor at George Washington University. Good evening, John. Hi, Keith. 63 people hired for partisan bias now occupying posts at the Justice Department, career posts. What should and, and what could Attorney General nominee Holder do about them without reenacting the politicizing that put them there in the first place? Well, that's the problem, Keith. There's no way to drain this swamp. And sort of like water pollution, you have to rely on the receiving capacity of a large agency to be able to absorb these types of appointments. But the most important thing he can do is not worry about these minions, but about the mission. You know, the, the, the reason we, we got into these problems was because the Justice Department has had three attorney generals, including the current one, that adopt clear legal relativity when they look at problems. And the important thing for Eric Holder tomorrow is to show that the legal relativism is over and that he's going to make tough choices and follow the rule of law even when he doesn't want to. And the most obvious example of that is to say that he will investigate any torture, and if torture is found, it will be prosecuted because it's the law not just of this country, but it's the, the law of the world. It's a war crime. And by simply saying that, he would tell attorneys in that department that we're back in the business of doing justice after an eight-year hiatus. Do you need an internal version of that as well? Do you need the prosecution of a Schlossman or any of the other people who ran into that sort of um, uh, trouble with Congress by not telling Congress what they'd actually done? Is that the same sort of symbolic importance as prosecuting torture? Well, he could. You know, this is not necessarily a binding decision on him. There's a reason why the U.S. attorney in D.C. rushed this decision to get it in just under the wire, because there's a policy at the Department of Justice not to go back and review these types of decisions. But it's not an, an absolute rule. But I doubt he's going to do that. I mean, what we have now in, by the way, McCasey, is that he has now refused to prosecute criminal contempt of Congress in what seems a perfectly clear case of it. He's refused to investigate. Uh, torture. He's refused to investigate unlawful surveillance, and he's refused now to investigate false statements. That's quite a legacy. Does uh, the, uh, the, the claim from Senator Schumer or the goal from Senator Schumer about trying to get a second prosecutor, let alone a charge against uh, this man, does it have any, any actual hopes, or is there anything that the Senate can do? Well, there's not much they can do with uh, Mukasey in this position and the U.S. attorney in D.C. It's up to them. Eric Holder obviously can ask for a full investigation, but I doubt that he will. We're desperately trying to get the Obama administration just to agree that they're going to investigate clear war crimes. Uh, it seems even less likely that they're going to go back and look at some of these individuals. But at the end of the day, the attorney general in the Obama administration has the job of cleaning up a horrific mess left by George Bush, who has done more damage to that agency than any president in history. It's going to take a lot of heavy lifting, but it's also going to take a lot of principled decisions. And if he plays politics tomorrow the way his successors did, then I'm afraid we can have little hope for the redemption of that department.
Um, do you think the redemption of the DOJ is uh, is something that will be facilitated by people in it? Is the will there within the staff to uh, and the rank and file to clean it up for uh, the attorney oh. general with the attorney general's lead? I know many people in the Department of Justice, very talented lawyers, uh, very apolitical, and they've been waiting desperately for this president to leave office. And some of them have really hung on because they love that department. It's a grand department with a wonderful history and legacy, and they want to rebuild it. And they've waited a long time. But this guy, Schlossman, by the way, chased away careerists mm -hmm. who just couldn't stand working beneath him. But I tell you, if Eric Holder wants to be a true attorney general, more attorney than general, unlike his predecessors, he'll have lots of people that will help him. Jonathan Turley of George Washington University, uh, thank you for helping us as always, sir. Thank you, Keith.